Hello everyone, today I'm going to cover uh, creating a Raspberry Pi MCU to use with your Clipper installation. This will allow you to control various GPIO pins on your Raspberry Pi and uh, with that you can control lighting, relays and stuff like that. You can control, so you can read uh, ADXL345 externometer or you can use it to read MAX31865 PT100 amplifier boards that connect via SPI. What you can't use this for is a timing sensitive application because of something to do with the Linux kernel and I'm imagining it's for the same reason. You can't use this for uh, Clipper's G-code button support. I tried that G-code button on various uh, two separate uh, Raspberry Pis on two separate printers with pretty much entirely different configurations and what happens is they constantly trigger and I'm assuming that's because of the timing limitations of the Linux kernel in that case as well so for that I do have a separate video so if you want more information on that you can check that but uh, yeah, you can't use this for buttons, but you can use it for pretty much any other GPIO use, like relays, as I said, or ADXL345 or uh, Max 31865, and uh, probably many other applications as well. And uh, creating the Raspberry Pi MCU, installing in it, and configuring it is also fairly simple. First of all, you SSH into your Raspberry Pi. Then you go to the Clipper directory, and here we need to execute two commands. One copies a file to the another destination. Uh, I'm not executing this, not because uh, they're bad or anything. It's just that I already did this installation on this Raspberry Pi. So that's why I'm not uh, actually executing the commands, but they're just fine and they're in the official documentation of Clipper as well so uh, yeah you don't have to worry about anything you also need to execute this command as well both the, these two commands and others will be linked in the description on the official Clipper documentation so uh, after you've done these things you need to build your Linux MCU so you do make menu config Here, for your microcontroller, you choose Linux process, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Then you select exit, and here, choose yes to save. Uh, next, we need to stop the Clipper service, so just execute this, this stops Clipper, then you can use this command to actually create and uh, relocate the files necessary to the destination on your Raspberry Pi. Make flash. Again, not executing it for the reasons I explained. And you just start your Clipper service again. And, well, that's basically it. But um, from time to time, you may encounter permission denied errors when connecting to the host MCU. If that happens, you need to add the uh, user pi, which is a default user on a Raspberry Pi, to the TTOI group. For that, you just use this command. It will usually ask for your passport for this one. So you can answer that. And there we go. The user pi is now in the group TTY. Now, for the rest of the configuration, you need to edit your uh, printer.cfg so at the beginning of it you need to add your Raspberry Pi as an MCU so I use the name Pi you can use something else if you wish you just add MCU Pi and then this as the serial address and uh, yeah that's basically the only thing step you need to do to introduce your uh, Pi MCU to Clipper for usage of this, one example I have here is the Max31865 board here. For that, for the sensor pin, I'm using GPIO of the Raspberry Pi, so just Pi and then GPIO22. 
Uh, one thing with the GPIO pins you use, uh, you can't use physical pins or uh, you can't also use wiring pipe pins, you have to use the BCM mode pins. So in this case, GPIO 22 is physical pin 15 or wiring pipe pin 3. And for example, if you want to use, I don't know, physical pin 40, you enter GPIO 21. So uh, yeah, the pinouts of Raspberry Pi can be confusing for that sometimes. So I'll link this website in the description below. It comes in pretty handy when configuring uh, the GPIO pins of a Raspberry Pi. But uh, yeah, that's uh, basically it. So once you configure it, you just control X. Then if you change something, it will ask if you want to save, so just say Y and then enter, which will save it to the same file name, and uh, that's basically it. Then you just execute firmware restart through the console of Octoprint or Mainsail or Fluid or whatever else you're using, and uh, yeah, it should work. That's basically all the installation steps required. So uh, yeah, that's kind of it for this video. So I'll link these, this, link the doc official documentation and the pinouts in the description below, so you can just copy the uh, commands necessary from there. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please leave me a like down below, and thanks for watching.